Hello, my name is Jody Ann Johnson, CEO of Miami's Action Coach Business Coaching firm, Team Sage, and you're a host for the Business Spotlight Miami, where we focus on businesses that make South Florida great. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Andrew Kisena. Did I say it right? Sure did. Oh, good. Um, Gables and Grove Painting. Gables and Grove Painting was founded in 2019 with a mission to become the finest and most eco-friendly residential and commercial painting company in Miami. I think probably beyond that as well, right? Welcome, mm-hmm. Andrew. Please give us a brief description of your business and what makes your business unique in your industry. Thank you, Jody. Nice to be here. Yeah, I think that that's a tricky last name. So it's uh, it's like it's Southern Italian in origin. And of course, the CH in Italian is like a K. So that's where you get the CHI is a key. And then you take it from there, right? It's it's a tricky one, though. I always I always got all kinds of interpretations growing up. <laughs> um, so yeah, I moved here from from New York in 2006. My I kind of unsuccessfully made an attempt at, uh, at university in upstate New York. And uh, of all things, it was I, I had a passion in geography Latin American studies, just kind of wanted to be like an Indiana Jones of sorts. <laughs> did you uh, get a new one? Like just came out this weekend? Oh, no, I didn't. I haven't. I'll have to get to that. Yeah. The new one. And so uh, I, I actually interned at National Geographic in D.C. Uh, in my, my senior year. And when I got back, only one friend from my class was still remaining because the rest had graduated. And he was a musician, guitar player. And so one night after perhaps a couple too many of those college sodas, he uh, he said to me, hey, would you like to uh, sing in a band? Should we start a college band? I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Sounds great. And so we did such a thing. And um, I, I had it, it became a 15 to 20 year um, obsession playing music. And it kind of blossomed into me playing guitar. Long story short, after college, I stayed in upstate New York for a while and pe- was painting homes, amongst other things, and still in a band. My parents had moved here while I was in college and moved to Miami, Coral Gables, and came down to visit them um, and discovered 8th Street Cayocho with congas and trumpets. And I was like, you know what? I, I want a punk rock band with trumpets and congas and all this. That's the place to be. Plus, I get to hang out with mom and dad, who are pretty awesome anyway. So I moved down from cold, wintry upstate New York. And uh, with the express intention of starting basically a punk ska band with uh, some really impressive horns and Caribbean vibe to it and succeeded in doing so. Uh, And along the way, well, pretty much at the onset or at the offset there, uh, partnered up with a French French kid, a bass player, uh, Mathieu, and he and I are, are lifelong pals. And he's since moved back to France, but he was a painter and Venetian plaster, house painter. His father was a sculptor, the uh, quite fantastic Christian Bernard, who goes by the, the name, the artist name Narbero, who's also since moved back to France. And he's done a bunch of sculptures around Miami and murals. And he did the 9-11 memorial sculpture in, in Bayside Park, a bunch of different things. And so that was Matt's dad. And so kind of under the guise of Bernard Galleries, Christian Bernard Galleries, Matt and I found ourselves doing Venetian plaster, painting backgrounds for murals, um, clouds, and just, you know, doing the background work, but also just helping Christian on different jobs. And then Matt and I would paint houses, a bunch of houses here around uh, around Coral Gables and just all over Miami, Miami Beach, um, different places. And all the while playing music and touring, um, we, were, we were an avid touring band. We were on the road a lot. And so you know, being our own quote unquote bosses painting, we we were able to kind of sustain that lifestyle. <laughs> of course, uh, you, you know, we, we collectively as a band probably had about $200 to our name. So, you know, it was always a fight to get diesel in the tank and so on and so forth. Um, but we, we had a great time. It was, it was a beautiful life. And um, yeah, we were, we were painting homes. The band ended uh, in, well, I'm, Inside, I say hiatus. Uh, in 2017-18, summer of, we were in Salt Lake City. Things went sideways. We'll leave it at that. 
And so in 2019, so May 1st of 2019 uh, is when Gables and Grove started. It had previously been Gables and Grove Fine Finishing, where I was, I personally was doing a lot of the uh, custom finishing on wood and doing Venetian plaster work and painting and mural backgrounding, mosaics, installing mosaics and backsplashes and that kind of thing there. Um, and then I decided that I, I really, I love the team building and the organization building that I had with the band for 12, 13 years. And so I kind of wanted to do that again, uh, this time in, in the world of the trades. And so, yep, got into it. And since May 1st, I, I have not picked up a brush and I'm kind of the, the quintessential working on the business instead of in the business. So that's, that's been the plan, uh, all the while, um, very much concerned with, the health of our waterways, the Everglades, uh, you know, Biscayne, uh, the the harbor here, excuse me, the bay, and and so that's that's a personal concern of mine, and so I I'd like to I use Gables and Grove to highlight some of the issues, environmental issues we face in South Florida, as well as um, like we do, kind of give back a little bit to that. I'll mute my Slack channel because it gets kind of busy in here. There we go. So that's a brief overview of uh, of what we do and how we do it. Okay. So the like, what what drove you to start the business? Just like the actually going into this business, the team building. The you know, I'm sure there was a huge uh, demand for your services in the marketplace. What was it that right, had yeah. to go? Okay, I'm going to do this now rather than that. And during the pandemic, did you keep working? We did. We did. Yeah. So of course, you know, when, when our band uh, kind of hung up its, its guitars for a second there, I just went to what I knew how to do, which was doing custom finishing and, you know, applying stuff to stuff, basically. <laughs> which I had been doing, right? Applying stuff to stuff. And so, you know, I kind of, I, I got in touch with a bunch of the GCs and some other contacts. My mother's a really awesome real estate agent here in town who, in, in the Gables. And so she had a bunch of people for me to call. And so kind of went after that and um, just start started doing a bunch of work um, myself, doing the trade myself. And then, you know, sitting back, kind of thinking about it and saying, well, how, how could we grow this? And how could I grow this um, to where it could have a larger impact and again, create a team? Because I enjoyed that with the band. A little caveat with the band, we weren't just a three-piecer. Uh, if we were touring, it'd be, it'd be hard pressed to find less than 10 of us, eight to 10 of us at a minimum on the bus. So we like that big band feel. And I've always liked big groups and organizations and fun kind of collaboration. <laughs> like that. So It sounds like all the stars aligned for you to do this and uh, being able to put your passions and some of the things that you've enjoyed doing that allowed you to pursue not just you know music as a hobby, but as a side profession and just you know I hear that many things including your mother's career aligned for you to be able to create this company yeah it's um of course I went from like one of the most exciting lifestyles right a rock and roll musician on stages every night you can imagine all the associated activities to essentially you know running a business an entrepreneur in 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 a, an industry where they've literally come up with a saying equating it to boredom. I'd rather watch paint dry. That's <laughs> the most like unsexy, unexciting. <laughs> like not, this is what I'm doing. So it's uh, it, definitely a change in that sense. But, you know, I, as you know, and, and many people know, entrepreneurship is anything but boring. I mean, there's a new ec- challenge around the corner every moment of the day. So, yeah. yeah it doesn't matter what, industry you're in you know being an entrepreneur is is something in and of itself regardless if it's dry cleaners or painting or you know it whatever it is there's always something right Right. you know one of the things that i do in these interviews is to um to share that simon sinek says people don't care what you do or how you do it but why you do it and your why is actually articulated on your website. There's a phrase here that really caught my eye. We envision a world of love, compassion, and harmony. 
these are not the typical things you would think of hearing from a trades company. Um, so I'm really intrigued. Why do you do what you do and why a world of love, compassion, and harmony? Yeah, the why is is where it's at. And, uh, you know, Sun Sonic is great. Cameron Herald with the Vivid Vision. So actually working on on my, our second, well, my second Vivid Vision for the company, a kind of three year with its BHAGs and all that. But um, I think being being a musician and being a writer of songs uh, over over for more than a decade, we, we typically boil down to you know that the topics are are few um with with all its myriad expressions but you know harmony and harmony of course being a musical term but you know ultimately it all boils down to love and so a big passion of mine uh dating well originating in upstate new york uh is is buddhism zen buddhism and uh, and also uh, some of the indigenous traditions of our beautiful uh, here on the eve of July Fourth, our beautiful uh, American United States, and uh, I, I think that uh, there, there's so much wisdom in in the the total accumulated uh, indigenous wisdom, and then of course uh, of, of some of the great spiritual traditions, and it's it's been a passion of mine. Um, it expressed itself in music and in our music that originated here in Miami, Florida. And uh, I, like you said, it, it, it's a, it's a value and a, and a why of mine. So it's going to express itself no matter it be a, a dry cleaner or a painting business or a rock and roll band uh, or putting spaceships on mm -hmm. Mars, whatever it may be. Uh, my, why I get up and what excites me and what motivates me. Uh, I, I, I've said this elsewhere too. It's providing for family and, and earning, you know, earning that financial freedom. To me, that's kind of a stale thing. Like, doesn't that kind of like comes with the human experience if you've got children or, you know, you, you want to do that. But I, I, I don't see it as a true intrinsic because it's our it's our personal personal story. You want to take care of your kids, take care of your parents, even brothers, sisters, whatever it may be, um, and then then also you know achieve that financial freedom that you see all over YouTube commercials nowadays, right? Uh, that's that's good and great and all. And sure, we'd all love to have our time and some money to do fun stuff in that time or or do impactful stuff or whatever it may be. Um, but the end of the day i i, I really feel we're, we're, we're not digging deep enough if that's what we really come up with so uh sitting there kind of staring at the trees staring at the clouds staring at the stars every so often i think it's really important uh as an entrepreneur or to, to give us a true drive to get up and and be energized and ready to get after it yeah. andrew how many people are on your team well we have uh i'd love to start with with the people who put stuff on stuff first. So uh, as painters and pliers and handymen, um, carpenters, stucco guys, uh, drywall drywall finishers, we don't actually hang the drywall. The, the stuff here, we, we do the finishing, make it smooth. And then of course, prime and paint. Um, there are, so we, we, we're between 16 and 20. We kind of have some of those guys are, you know, subcontracted where we're not calling on them that, that frequently it's it's not often that we're installing doors or putting you know baseboards in or fascia um which we we like to do and offer as kind of an auxiliary service to the main thing we do which is finishing and painting um so yeah so we're about 16 to 20 of the trades the trades guys guys and gals by the way uh you know giselle ah, um your website. yeah you yeah yeah so, you know the the ladies are they're I'd like to say for the most part more detail oriented, but they're just calm. Painting, uh, I don't know if, if anybody, if you ever have Jody or if anybody watching, um, but I've, I've painted many years. It's it's truly, uh, once you really start to get into the rhythm after about the first, second hour in the morning, and you're if you're doing this for seven, eight hours a day, uh, that swoosh and that movement, the up and down, and because painting is, is a, a good paint job is essentially, it's a well-executed recipe. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, 
you have to do certain, it's an order. It's an order. You don't put just yeah, anything in the oven. Um, and so you, you have to pay attention to detail, you follow the recipe, and then you're doing just these beautiful movements and you really have to move smooth. And, and uh, it can really be a, a meditative kind of practice almost. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it attracts uh, men and women, both and, and all, all types of ultimately um, calm people, artisan, art, artisanal based people. Now, of course, you know, we we painted at the Formula One track, the new Formula One track, the Hard Rock. We're up in 120 foot booms, um, you know, applying heavy duty materials to in high wind to steel, you know, structures and trusses and whatnot. Um, so, you know, there, there's a little bit of of rock and roll in there too. Right. But kind of you're on the gamut. Um, so there's, there's that team there who's out in the field. Uh, we have one outstanding project manager, Alberto, who, um, whose job is quality control and scheduling and all of that. Um, taking the project from once it's, it's achieved contract to completion. Um, we have several great gals in the office alongside me who work combination of marketing and just, financial administrative things, different things like that. And then a team of sales. There are two in sales uh, who uh, we, we don't, we say sales, but honestly with customer facing, it's real consultants, uh, consultancy. So we're, we're consulting where we collectively as a team, we consider ourselves guides and our customers, the heroes who don't even know they're heroes yet. They're characters who want to become heroes and we are the guide. We're Yoda. We're Gandalf, we're Coach Phil Jackson. We are not Luke Skywalker. They're Luke Skywalker. They're Michael Jordan. They're Bilbo Baggins, right? So we're we're helping them along uh, to to ultimate success. And and real it's their hero's person. journey, huh? The real Pardon heroes. Me? I said the real hero's journey from uh, Joseph Campbell is what you're describing, being the guide. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that true? I mean, it, this yeah. it's a story. It's a myth. It's it's transformation. So yeah, I, I think a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we position ourselves as the heroes because we're doing heroic things by running companies. I mean, we, this is this is heavy duty stuff here. Especially once you start to bring on people and you have financial responsibility, and and then there's so many more levels and layers. Um, and of course, I'm young at it, but um, we're, we're doing, but we position ourselves in the eyes of our prospects and customers, potential customers as heroes. And ultimately we're, we're not, they're the hero. We're the guide. They're the ones going on the journey, not us. Yep. So, so that's about our team all in all, um, at our, our yearly company party, which we love to do out at Bill Bags. Uh, we're, we're at, when all the, the, the spouses and kids are there, we're at a good 60 to 70. So it's fun. Right. That, that's families, but that's yeah, we're, we're five. Yeah. Yeah. Five in the office, 15, 20 out in the field. Very good. Well, you've already surpassed the, the typical business in Florida and, and actually nationally and even globally of 10. So you're double that, which is a mm -hmm. great accomplishment. Well done. And what you. would you say is the biggest business challenge today? And you know, what's ahead for you and your business? Yeah, so earlier you asked if we continued through COVID and COVID happened within the first year. Now, of course, we're here in Florida. So for us, it was like just a cough and everyone moved on, which is, you know, great. I have, I come from New York. I still have relatives up there and like, seems like Armageddon went on, you know, just wild stuff. Um, but for the trades and especially the finishing trades and especially painting, um, COVID kind of boomed us a bit, right? Because people were home. They wanted to, ref you know, we talk about transformation. So we're freshening up your home, which is now your office also. So now you get an additional eight hours there, eight, 10 hours a day in, in this place. So um, we were in there, we're scraping popcorn ceiling, we're painting, we're doing all kinds of things. And that went on for a year and a half. And I, I talk with many painters and part of, you know, part of the PCA, which is the, the Paint Contractors of America uh, or so Association, and uh, some other coaching groups and whatnot. So I've got my pulse on, on what people are saying. And if you ask kind of what's happening, um, I'd say a, a trinity of things. One, all the COVID money has been spent and everyone's back to the office more or less. Um, and so that, that push to work in the home has kind of petered out to, you know, interest rates here in the 
well, beginning quarter or quarter three, halfway through 2023. And then of course, just the state of the economy in general, maybe some uncertainty. So um, we have found that the lead flow of prospects, people looking and this just that looking to paint um, has, has changed. Um, and then that there's a little bit more price consciousness over, over value perhaps that we, we noticed previously. So that would be um, one thing just kind of at the, the start of the funnel and marketing uh, and then feedback from sales and being out there and feeling it with the pulse on that too, that price, a little bit more price sensitive um, and maybe not looking as much uh, to value. Um, then on the other side, I think it's, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's opportunity to wow people now and that that's what we focus on, right? We want to, we want to wow. Um, of course, we're there to, to transform and to guide you along. Um, but we, we want to wow. So we talk about a plus one, right? So we actually, we want to throw a percent of, of revenue towards plus wanting a customer. So we're not, we're, we're going to do what it says on the scope of work, what it says on the contract, what you asked us to do, what you expect from us to do. Um, we're going to do that, but we've always got our eye out about how is there a loose door handle? Was the hose kind of beat up? Whatever it is. And we want to go ahead and take care of that. And I think that 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 little touch there, as well as um, being committed to some type of local cause, which for us is Friends of the Everglades, Miami Waterkeepers. Miami Waterkeepers doesn't even know that we're coming for them because um, by the year's end, we're going to have a check for them. Um, but last year we had a, a check for for Friends of the Everglades, and we may have another one this year for them as well. Uh, and then also, you know, partnering up with with other local companies. So we, you know, we have partnerships with uh, some other great people who trades people who we feel would give our customer base an equally good experience. And then, yeah, that's, these are some of the opportunities I think we have. I, I probably may forget this, the second part of the question. My memory is a little short there. I was asking what was ahead for you in the next two to three years, but you kind of answered it. I really am. Yeah. Um, making sure that you're wowing your customers and creating those those kind of, we would call them strategic alliances and business alliances um, so that you can keep providing the level of service and um, this exceptional service that your yeah. customers expect and that you're committed to delivering. What's inspiring you most about business these days? So we uh, we we did um, we did some work for a local business owner uh, at at their home. They they own a business here in Coral Gables that's been around forever, and they're very well known in the community. And I was I actually had done work for them previously. They called us back, we went to their home, did some work. I got a great text from uh, from him, uh, you know, just the other day on the weekend, and that kind of thing is great. Um, I mean, really, for me, it's it's about you know this this is Monday, so we had our Monday huddle this morning. It's getting in trading ideas, it painting, and now we're in our fourth year has kind of become like the band, in a sense, right? So these guys and girls, when we get together and talk, it's it's kind of like being on the bus again with you know my my guys and girls of of Ascultura, the band. Um, we, so it's, it's, I'm, I'm going to stop there in the sense of it's not as maybe exciting come midnight, uh, but definitely like, you know, during, during the day, it's, it's great. And, you know, we're, we, people have jobs with us, mm -hmm. you know, they have well paying jobs. They're, they're, they're doing, they're part of a company that, uh, I know that they're not, of course, there for a paycheck, but I know that they're all excited because we were very tech advanced. We really push tech in our in our organization. And, you know, so that that garners like a very, you know, forward thinking and and excitable kind of person. Um, and then, you know, we sustainability is one of our inner or we call them our interfacing core values, you know, mastery, ownership, sustainability being the third. So um, I wouldn't say that that value has brought us uh, the Rachel Carsons of the world, the environmentalists of the world, but 
I think we've actually turned some people to care. Our project manager, for instance, I don't know that he was necessarily a quote unquote environmentalist, and I wouldn't say he is now, um, but he definitely is making sure that buckets and cans are getting cleaned and ready for recycling as opposed to ending up in the trash heap up there. Okay. And so I, that kind of stuff is, is exciting to me. It's cool. Well, it's, it's very important. So having grown up here in, in Miami, you know, our aquifer is subject to the leaching of all kinds of toxic chemicals through the coral rock and so on. So it, it really matters that someone in your field cares about that and protects it on behalf of all the rest of us. So thank you for that. Yeah. Yep. We're small little gables and grow of painting and we, we don't use a gazillion buckets and cans, but we do what we can. And perhaps someday we will be using a gazillion buckets and cans a year. <laughs> uh, and that will, they will be getting cleaned and ready for recycling. Awesome. Yeah. So as we wrap up the interview, Andrew, are there any other parting things that you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, I, as I mean, to, to entrepreneurs and yeah. and in, in business in general, in general, whatever you'd like. Um, I think everyone should read the book Ishmael, fantastic book by Daniel Quinn, um, which has definitely led me to including sustainability on uh, on on our our core values. Um, so that that's been a real kind of game changer for me. Um, yeah, it's with with teams. I, uh, as leaders, we have to show up with with our vision, our vivid vision, and our why, like you said there, and let that really drive drive the decisions. If things don't sit with it, they just get sifted out. If it doesn't sit with our why, if it doesn't sit with the the ultimate uh, goals of of the visions, and they have to be filtered out. Um, I'd say always as entrepreneurs, we need to seek coaching and put somewhere in your budget for always improving that coaching. Uh, so be it, you know, personal, personal growth and what, whatnot, um, but also, you know, business coaching in your genre and shout out to Breakthrough Academy in, in my industry and anybody in the trades who happens to listen, listen, should definitely check out Breakthrough Academy, uh, an amazing company based uh, up in, in Western Canada there who, who help guide the trades and have given us um, uh, tons of, of breakthrough. Um, so yeah, the, the coaching, the why, the vision, it's kind of things where, and then know your numbers. We've all got to know our numbers really well. You know our numbers. Um, yep, know our numbers. And I also think uh, that there's something to be said for uh, automation and tech and uh, just really kind of looking at obviously the big changes since November 22 with open AI and, you know, chat being the foremost there, but uh, there's such opportunity with, um, with again, offer wowing customers, wowing prospects and customers and guiding them through the journey um, with the help of, and all of our industries are going to change uh, with, with open AI in general. Um, and I, I think, you know, just to, to bring it back to the trades, one last thing here is that uh, I've, I've been around it since about 2005, 2006 here in Miami, and that's, you know, good 16, 17 years. And I've been in other places around the trades. My grandfather was a master electrician in Brooklyn and, um, you know, been around it in Long Island, New York, and upstate New York. I think there's a bad reputation for the trades in general around the country, right? GC, you know, contractors aren't trusted, um, all these sorts of things here. I think Miami has just an extra dose as Miami does <laughs> in general. I just love to just really, really go go extra with things sometimes. And, and uh, the, the trades have a bit of a bad reputation. So alongside all the other great things is really just want to elevate the trades because I think that there's a lot of good people in it. A lot of good potential, and and obviously we're here to stay. No AI is ever going to replace the 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 smooth arm of a sprayer or or the concentration of a roller up and down a wall. It's just it, it shall never be replaced. Uh, and so um, we we need to elevate that and bring it to 
to here and now. And, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of my, my mission and goal. One of them, I should say. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time and the difference that you're making, you know, for your clients, for your team members out in the world, for Friends of the Everglades. One of my clients is, does work for them. And um, you know, just really thank you for the consciousness, the care that you're putting into everything that you're doing and, and what matters to you. So it's uh, been an absolute pleasure. So with that, could you tell how people, our audience, how they can reach you? Sure. Yep. Uh, we are Gables and Grove, gablesandgrove.com. And we do some fun stuff on our Instagram at Gables and Grove. Um, there's a YouTube channel. And um, yeah, I mean, we, we do uh, virtual quotes that way if, if anybody's actually interested in virtual quotes. But if they'd like to chat with me, I'm Andrew at gablesandgrove.com. And uh, let's, let's get a little email going. Let's talk back and forth. Uh, and that's that. Yeah. All right, Andrew, a pleasure. Business Spotlight South Florida, where we interview business owners that are making a difference and make our city and our community great. Thank you.